that was a good ride. All right, everybody, welcome back to the KS Moto Cafe. For this week's episode, I want to talk a little bit about this guy here my front brakes and the reason why I want to talk about that is after the Sportster S video where I talk about my pros and cons about the bike where based on the information received from Harley Davidson's reveal launch video it showcased an amazing performance oriented motorcycle but then when I saw the front side of the bike all I saw was a front disc brake which was quite disappointing however one of my viewers found a detailed spec sheet where it actually showed that the front disc brake on the Sportster S is actually a Brembo with a four pin and caliper which actually gives a lot of stopping power compared to what I have here which is a single disc brake just like the Sportster S but what I have is a dual piston caliper whereas the Sportster S comes with a four and for those who already know how brakes work obviously you can skip this video but for those who are learning these things new like I was I had to research on what that actually meant and how it increased the braking power and it's actually quite simple as I walk around here I'm just going to show you the science behind all this which really is all physics take a look at this it's our friction ramp of science so what you got here on your right handlebar is the brake lever and brake fluid reservoir you as a rider control this brake lever and when you pull on it there is a piston that pushes the fluid through this tube and the tube is a closed system there shouldn't be any leaks so that pressure of the brake fluid that gets pushed from your handlebar all the way down to your brake where here it will split the brake fluid into your pistons that's pushing these rods onto a brake pad that grips your disc tracking so far so the more pistons you have obviously the more pressure you're putting onto the disc and that pressure is also being split into different surface areas and that is important because as you may know friction creates heat it's a little bit warm friction turned that work in the heat. And if you have only a single point of pressure onto on a disc like this, it's just going to heat up this one location, which what you end up having is brake fade. And it's not good. Having a brake fade is not good. It actually lowers the efficiency of your stopping power. Now let's say that you split that pressure into two areas. So now you have two points of contact. Same amount of pressure really, but now the surface area has increased by two points. That means area that's going to heat up the disc is now spread apart, which means there'll be less of a brake fade compared to when you had one point of contact. When you have four pistons, which means you have two here and two on the other side, then now you have four points of contact equally distributed onto the disc. Therefore, it increases your braking power by a lot more than when you had were one. Now, if you increase that into two discs, then now you're giving the bike twice the braking power as well as twice the surface area for the brake heat to dissipate from. So it, it is obviously more advantageous for a bike to have dual disc brakes. But why won't all bikes be made with dual disc brakes? Well, if you haven't noticed, weight has a lot of factor to it too. By adding on a whole new brake disc, it adds weight to your bike, which also plays into a factor of performance. And as well, it increases the base cost of your bike. For me, when I saw the Sports Rest with a single disc brake, I thought they were trying to cut cost because obviously when you look at the Pan America or the Livewire that also had a Brembo dual disc brakes, I couldn't understand why the Sports S didn't get the same treatment because A, it comes with the same engine and B, the parts are already there. Some people in the comments were talking about, oh, it's all only for looks, but it's not. It really is not just for looks. It's all about having that braking power when you need it the most. And that's not like being on a track or you're trying to break your own record. I'm talking about in traffic where something unexpected happens and you have to count on your braking power to stop the bike from you colliding into something. And that's when you really would wish to have braking power. From my first hand experience, when I took the Sportster 1240 8 and the Sportster 1200 iron they all had the single disc brake and it felt pretty sloppy when I was trying to brake but when I took out the 1200 Roadster which is the only bike that comes with dual disc brake for a Sportster comparison was night and day between the Roadster with twin dual disc to the Sportster iron 1200 or the 48 which had a single disc brake so adding that extra stopping power definitely made a big difference in emergency braking distance now does that mean one bike is better than the other well not really it all comes down to the rider and the rider understanding the limitations of the bike 
And based on some of the articles that I've already read from people that got to test ride the bike, they did mention the braking of the Sportster S was adequate. So I obviously trust their opinions and hopefully I get a chance to test that theory out myself. But I just wanted to clarify that with my viewers who watched the video and thought that I was looking for a dual disc brake just for looks and that is not it. I care about safety which leads to having more braking power. Now if you wish to know more about the new Sportster S coming up, click that subscribe button because I will be covering that as I go and I learn more about the motorcycle. And as well, my channel is also about my rider's experience and I have a lot of interesting topics coming your way. So please help me to reach that goal of 1000 subscribers by end of this year. And till next time, ride safe, ride prepared. Right on. Peace.